Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in Network Analysis and Synthesis. Today, we'll analyze a bandpass filter in terms of its cutoff frequencies. We'll talk about the mathematics and the rationale behind it. Uh, if you wish to design a bandpass filter or solve numericals based on bandpass filter that has already been discussed in a separate video, I'll give a link to that video in the description. But this video is particularly uh, focused on the derivation of the cutoff frequencies its mathematics so let's get straight into it we know that the band pass filter is a little different from uh, low pass or a high pass filter because there are uh, double the number of components uh, which are present we have l1 l2 c1 and c2 present um, in such a way that the series arm acts like an acceptor circuit and the shunt arm acts like um, a rejector circuit because it offers a very very high impedance and the series arm uh, offers a lower impedance so it's kind of um, cascading a uh, you know low pass filter with a high pass filter and the common area of or the common range of frequencies is what we get in the result and which results in the creation of a band pass filter now that was the design uh, school of thought but if we if we look at the mathematics of uh, the band pass filter it essentially requires you to understand that every filter has uh, a characteristic impedance which is in this case is given by ZOT because it's a T configuration and without knowing the characteristic impedance we really can't uh, analyze a filter because the characteristic impedance uh, gives us the limiting condition so that's the key point here so if you were to start with a strong fundamental of an analysis you need to understand this key point that ZOT is super important if ZOT is imaginary or your uh, characteristic impedance is imaginary that goes to show that the filter is uh, behaving like a stop band it is in stop band and if your ZOT is real then your filter is in pass band so when do the start band or the stop band start that is obtained by getting a sweet spot of frequency uh, where ZOT becomes zero. So in other words, if we look at the response of a filter, you know, uh, there, there comes a frequency where it transitions from uh, being imaginary to real. So in other words, you'll find this uh, this kind of a graph in the books where uh, the frequency uh, at which the uh, reactance goes from negative territory to positive territories or in other words it, it shows that your ZOT becomes imaginary to real so that becomes the cutoff frequency and that decides the frequency below which it'll uh, it'll act as a stop band and up after that it will act as a pass band uh, the, this limiting condition is obtained once in a low pass and a high pass filter because if you look at the characteristic impedance of a low pass filter which is um, z1 square upon 4 plus z1 z2 under root so you'll get one value of omega for which um, you get ZOT to be equivalent to zero and we consider that value of omega or FC as a matter of fact to be the cutoff frequency but when we do the analysis of band pass filter we'll, we'll take this ZOT to be the starting point and we'll find the points where ZOT becomes zero because at ZOT is equivalent to zero we are we are sure that it will be the transitional point below that frequency it will be imaginary and above that frequency it will be um, real because that's what the definition of a cutoff frequency is 
So super important point is the importance of ZOT uh, as being imaginary or real um, in stop and pass band respectively. So let's get uh, into the derivation part. We know that omega naught square L1 C1 is 1 and omega naught square L2 C2 is equivalent to 1 which gives me this relation. The series arm of the band pass filter is given by Z1 and the shunt arm is given to be Z2. So it's important that we calculate Z1, Z2 and then we calculate Z1 and Z2 because this term is going to be uh, used in finding ZOT and after that we'll put in that limiting condition where ZOT becomes zero because that limiting condition will give me frequencies. So if you look at Z1 of course this is L1 and C1 in series so this becomes my Z1 and if you look at Z2, L2 and C2 are in parallel so the formula for parallel So I'll label this as step number one where I calculate Z1 and Z2 and by the way it's simply multiplication of this term with this term so what you're getting is L2 upon C1 or L1 upon C2 because at resonance this condition is already discussed and we label it as R naught square or this is a constant by the way. So if the first step is clear Z1 Z2 is one quantity that we need to keep handy. We can go to the next step which is finding ZOT and we know the uh, characteristic impedance of a T section is Z1 square upon 4 plus Z1 Z2. Now what we do is we tweak this a little so ZOT square is equivalent to um, this under root gone and I've uh, divided both the sides by Z1 and so that gives me this and again dividing by Z2 what I obtain is this now why is this important to you know tweak our formula like this because this will give me the limiting condition. The limiting condition of course as I discussed earlier is that to, to be equivalent to zero and that will happen only if the uh, term on the right hand side becomes equivalent to zero. If the term on the right hand side this term becomes zero of course that will happen only when z1 upon 4 z2 becomes equivalent to 1 and again we need to be clever enough to find uh, the value of Z1 in terms of R0. So it's you know multiplying Z1 on both the sides we get Z1 square is equivalent to 4 Z1 Z2 and Z1 Z2 we know that so Z1 becomes equivalent to plus minus J 2 R0 and we see that the limiting condition is obtained at two different frequencies one for plus J 2 R0 and the other one for minus j to r naught. So if we get the limiting conditions at two different points that means we'll have two cutoff frequencies and that is the crux of the matter. So mm, we know that z1 is either positive or negative at the limiting condition so we assume that z1 is positive for f1 and Z1 is negative for F2 so because we need to check these two conditions so we know that Z1 is equivalent to this thing so if I put this thing equivalent to uh, J2 R0 this J will get cancelled and you'll get so J gets cancelled and because this is one cutoff frequency so I label it as F1 uh, of course it is obtained from omega um, 1 square so 
what I get is this and because uh, I might get a plus minus here but there is no significance of negative frequency so I uh, take only the positive sign I eliminate the negative sign now if you look at um, uh, you know the first condition is taking this to be positive and the second condition is taking this to be negative and uh, the first condition gives me a frequency which is R0 plus something and the second condition gives me minus R0 plus something and we know that the term inside this under root is greater than R0 because it is R0 square plus something right so it it might be uh, it has to be rather uh, greater than R0 so this this thing can never become uh, a negative quantity or um, goes into an Im imaginary territory so because these two are getting added when we know L1 and C1 are real numbers so this term in the under root will always be greater than R0 because essentially this only this term is equivalent to R0 so we've added something to it not subtracted anything so one frequency and of course we'll also infer that f2 will be smaller than f1 because over here uh, this bigger quantity uh, minus the smaller quantity will give me a smaller value as compared to this bigger quantity being added to this smaller one so we get two frequencies one frequency is uh, higher than the uh, other frequency so this becomes our lower cutoff frequency and this becomes our higher cutoff frequency and uh, this is the limiting condition below which uh, the filter will act like a stop band so f1 and f2 are taken to be positive So again reiterating the key points here that the stop band is where the impedance Z0 is imaginary and our case is ZOT because we've just analyzed the T section and the pass band is something where the impedance ZOT is real. So if we talk in terms of reactances so we get this F2 is smaller than F1 so this f2 is that critical frequency where my filter transitions from a stop band to being a uh, pass band so this is stop band this is pass band and again this is stop band which is governed by the frequency number one f1 which is higher in um, magnitude so as to say and this also you know marks a transitional point in the uh, working of a filter so that is how you find out the uh, cutoff frequencies and that is how the characteristic impedance of a two port network is so very important in determining its uh, behavior uh, in terms of the frequency that we apply to it and I hope this tutorial was of help if you like the content of the video please give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel that will be a great help and thank you for watching this video i'll see you around in the next one you take care you have a great day ahead and a good life